We've waited and waited and waited, but the takeover at Leeds has finally completed. Here is what we can expect. It was late last night that Leeds tweeted that the EFL had finally ratified the deal for 49ers Enterprises to take over. It's been ages since the deal was basically agreed, but the confirmation has taken over five weeks. Look, I can understand the Leeds fans' patience was being tested, but people are also very quick to criticise the EFL whenever the owner turns out to be not exactly what they said they were. Parag Marathe is now the chairman, but Angus Kinnear, who's been there since 2017, remains as the CEO. Kinnear was Andrea Rad Rizzani's guy, and the takeover formally ends Rad Rizzani's era. Be very interested to know what Leeds fans' summation of that time was. I guess on the positive side, it was the era that gave them Bielsa and the long-awaited return to the Premier League. On the negative side, Bit oversimplistic, I know, but Leeds are essentially back where they started under Rad Rizzani in the championship where they spent 10 straight seasons from 2010 to 2020. 49ers Enterprises are the investment arm of the NFL franchise in San Francisco. They're also the third example of US money coming into the championship just this close season after the takeovers at Huddersfield and at Birmingham. In terms of US ownership, though, in the championship, you can add Mylot, Ipswich to that, as well as Swansea and Millwall to take us to six. There also seems to be a slow-moving transition going on at Norwich that will likely add them to the list sooner rather than later. It's been the case that championship and even League One teams are a sought-after investment with the obvious end game, the Premier League, and the money that comes with that. I'd suggest Leeds are a little bit different, though, for a couple of reasons, as the 49ers have essentially been involved since about 2018, so not exactly a new face. And also, because of Leeds' size and scope, some investors sort of come in with the idea that buying a championship club is a cheap way to do it and become a Premier League owner. But I think given the current interest in Leeds for the 49ers, the interest from outside and Leeds' impressive ability to generate revenue that that kind of idea is off the table too. A lot of people are gonna see the name 49ers and assume that Leeds become part of some kind of sports conglomerate group, but that's really not the case. 49ers Enterprises are essentially a fund controlled by the owners of the NFL team. So the link is to them rather than to the team as a whole. There are a number of high net worth and famous American sports stars who invest in this fund. Now, I know the Leeds fans are having fun with this, but it's not really the same as a Wrexham type situation with superstar owners literally at the top of the club. But it'll do absolutely no harm whatsoever in terms of profile and marketing reads, especially in America. The size and power of any championship ownership is always a little bit limited by the FFP rules. In theory, if everybody stuck to those rules, then the three-year £39 million loss limit would kind of mean that any wealth above that was immaterial. Obviously, in practice, the more money you have access to, the better, especially as you go up the ladder. But it is worth remembering that these funds, however much they're worth, don't just invest in one particular area or organisation. Ultimately, they're looking for long-term growth and value in the asset rather than someone like the Manchester United owners where, okay, the asset has gone up, but they also take out big dividend payouts every year. Now, in terms of promoted championship teams, Leeds were actually a pretty good financial model under Rad Rizzani. Yes, they did invest heavily in wages, but also weren't scared to sell strategically the likes of Pontus Janssen and Jack Clark going out during that summer before they went up. Promotion did come with a big loss. That sadly seems to be the same for everybody. But COVID needs to be factored in there and the losses that came from that as well as those promotion bonus, which tend to be utilised by clubs pushing at the top as they don't actually get included in the FFP calculation. Now, my experience covering all teams in the championship unfortunately tells me that fans of relegated Premier League teams tend to be rather prickly and defensive about admitting the financial advantages they have when they join the championship. 
even though the revenue drop from the Premier League is severe, equally severe for the teams that don't have them are the impact of the parachute payments paid by the Premier League that Leeds will be getting for the first three years of any potential stay they have in the Championship. So my take then, for what it's worth, I'm pleased for the Leeds fans, despite the wonder years under Bielsa, there did seem to be a bit of a ceiling under Radrazzani, and the execution did seem to be getting a bit loose the longer his era went, and I think the trust was diminishing somewhat. I'd suggest you'll only see the potential of this ownership should Leeds get promoted. At championship level, look, let's be fair about it, Leeds are a giant. They're very likely going to be top for commercial incomes and other sort of non-transfer generated revenues. You'd imagine Leicester and Southampton might actually take the crown in terms of total revenue given player sales and some of the way this current Leeds squad has been structured, but add in the parachute payments as well, and that guarantees all three of those relegated teams will be at the top for broadcast revenue, and they'll be getting five times what the rest do. My argument is always, don't hate the player, hate the game, and a competently run relegated Premier League team should at least be in the top four. Of course, I accept that non-relegated teams are sometimes run incompetently, and that does raise some of the issues the 49ers are inheriting that will need sorting out, particularly in the short term in this first transfer window. I won't pretend to understand American sport, I don't, but my Google machine says Parag Marathe is in his 22nd year with the 49ers, currently serving as both president of 49ers Enterprises and executive vice president of football operations. My limited knowledge tells me that I would assume he knows what he's doing. Get in those comments below. Let me know your takes on the ownership change at Leeds. And why not click here to see my ranking of every championship owner. This was obviously made before these three summer takeovers, but it should give you an idea of the playing field and the current landscape that the 49ers come into in the second tier.